Hi everybody! So here is the third part and now I'm going to show you how I measure some of my off the rack corsets. So when you receive a standard size or off the rack corset in the mail or even one of your custom corsets, I recommend that you take measurements as soon as you take it out of the package before you even put it on. Make sure that both sides are symmetric, make sure that the uh, measurements of the underbust waist, hips and length are what they're supposed to be, that it uh, reasonably matches what they mentioned in their size chart if they have one. And if there's anything structurally wrong with the corset, like it's an inch larger on one side than the other or anything like that, then now would be the time to send it back. Not after you've been wearing it for several weeks and it looks obviously worn and everything because you might not be able to get an exchange or a return at that point. When you measure it right away before it's been worn, then they can't blame you for somehow abusing or stretching out the corset weirdly to create uh, any asymmetry or difference in measurements. So um, I'm going to show you how to do this now. So here is one of my true corset cinchers. It's the Dragon Brocade. And I chose this one first because it's nice and simple. It is the same length uh, on the, the front, the side, and the back, and it is just cut straight across at the top and the bottom so you don't have to worry about angles or anything. So what I'll do is I'll usually measure it from the inside. It seems to be a little bit more accurate that way. And I'll start at the top edge for the underbust measurement. And I'll just put the, the very edge of the tape along the edge. Now, if you start from the back edge or the front edge, it doesn't really matter as long as you're keeping this um, perpendicular to the busk or the perpendicular to the back edge so that you know it's technically horizontal. And I basically hold the corset taut as well as the measuring tape and I walk it along with my hands. So you can see that on this side, the top measurement of this corset is 13 inches. So if you want to stop there, that's fine. You can just double it and say that the top edge is 26 inches in total because obviously you need to double it for both sides. Um, if you want to make sure that it's symmetric, then you can feel free to measure the other side. So you just repeat this on the other side. And this one is, this side is about 13 and a half inches, but actually when you look at it from the other side, you can see that the, the um, the modesty placket is protruding a little bit, so take that in mind when you are doing your measurements. For an off-the-rack corset, I will accept a difference of a, about a quarter inch, in some cases half an inch if it works to my advantage. For instance, if it's half an inch larger on the hips of my left side, it will fit me better than if the corset were per perfectly symmetric because my body is not symmetric. And if you wanted to measure the circumference of the waist, I put the bottom edge of my measuring tape along the bottom edge of the waist tape. Now, because this waist tape does not extend right to the first panel, I sort of have to extrapolate it in a straight line. So I put it like that. And once again, I try to hold the corset taut as I walk along the, the width of the corset and you can see that it's about 11 and a half inches on this side. So if I double that, it would turn out that this corset is 23 inches. So this corset is supposed to be 22 inches, so it must have stretched, or it might have been bigger when I first got it, actually, but uh, this was one of the corsets that I had failed to measure when I first got it, and now I'm kind of w wishing that I did. Um, and then for the bottom edge, once again, it just goes in a straight line, so you just start at the edge of the busk, and you walk it along, holding your corset taut and you can see it's 14 and a half inches. So if you were to double that, it would be 29 inches along the bottom edge, which would uh, pretty much line up with your iliac crest. And this is the reason why I wasn't able to fully close this corset because my iliac crest is 33 inches. This one is 29. So um, I, I just couldn't lace it any less than about three or four inches gap in the back. Uh, otherwise my hips would have gone numb and everything. So. Um, Although this corset does have some curves to it, it's uh, not the perfect fit for me. Now for the length of this corset, it's really easy. You just measure straight along the busk here and you can see that it's nine and a half inches. And if I were to measure anywhere else along the length of this corset, then it will be somewhere in the range of nine and a half inches. Uh, a couple of places that's actually a little bit closer to nine, but uh, 
yeah, it, it doesn't actually change all that much. So uh, as long as your torso is at least nine and a half inches, then you would be able to sit down in this corset comfortably. Now let's go to the Victorian Underbust by Isabella Corsetry. And the reason that I am showing this one is that it actually comes down in a point at the bottom. And so when you're measuring this corset, you can't simply just start from here and walk it across and, and, and say that, okay, well, this is the measurement because when you're measuring on a diagonal is always going to be longer than if you are measuring the true horizontal measurement and you want that horizontal measurement. So as best as you can in this situation, if you're going to measure the bottom here, I'm sort of stretching it out because this is the point that the, the corset curves over my iliac crest. I'm just sort of lining up my measuring tape so that it is as perpendicular as possible to the uh, the busk here. Because the busk always sits vertically on your body, or it should sit vertically, then when you uh, measure perpendicular to that, that should give you the true circumference. So I'm mentally cutting off this entire area here. And it actually does make a difference. So from here, when I'm trying to measure the true circumference, then uh, the distance from the uh, front edge from the busk over to this side seam here is seven inches. Whereas if I wanted to measure along this area here, it's actually uh, closer to eight inches. So if you were to have measured along this curve, it would have actually given you a larger hip measurement than it truly is. And then if you have wide hips, then you might buy this corset and then get confused because it feels tight on your hips and you're saying, well, why does it feel tight on your hips? It's because it was measured wrong initially. So if I try to take the true hip measurement of this corset, um, setting it perpendicular to the busk here and just walking it along. Now, this is not a perfect science, but you can measure this several times and try to take the average here. And it also dips down a little bit in the back. So I'm kind of curving it back up in the back here and I get 15 and a half inches. So if I were to double that, if I just presume that this corset is symmetric, then it would be 31 inches circumference for the iliac crest. Another issue that you might run into is having an enclosed waist tape. It's a hidden waist tape, so you can't actually see it exposed on the inside or the outside. So how do you know where to measure? Well, if you pull it taut and sort of look at it on an angle so that the light hits it a certain way, you can actually see the outline of a waist tape. And if I were to draw a really rough outline, then it would go across sort of like that. So um, this is just, you know, chalk. You can wipe it away afterwards so it's not going to ruin the corset. And if I, once again, hold the corset as taut as possible, try to measure along the straight line, just walk it across, pulling this corset, then you can see that the waist of this corset is exactly 11 inches on one side, so it's a size 22 corset. Now here is the CS426 from Orchard Corset, and this is a long line corset. So the waist of the corset is about here. My iliac crest sits about there, and you can see that the lower edge here is actually my lower hip. So like I said before, my lower hip is around 35 inches. So I'm going to measure that against this corset at the bottom edge and see if it fits. So this one does have a little bit of a downward curve towards the bottom, but not a huge amount. So I'm only going to cut off like maybe about an inch uh, mentally in my imagination. And I'm going to once again hold the corset taut and walk it across. So the bottom edge of this corset is 17 and a half. So if I presume that it is symmetric on both sides and double this, then it would actually come exactly to 35 inches. So I was very lucky in this situation that I uh, got a standard size corset that fit my natural measurement so well at the hip. Now, if I do this at the top, you can see that um, it curves down under the breast and then it comes up in a point again. So if I want to take the true circumference, then I have to mentally cut off that point at the top there. And I'm just going to, once again, walk it across and try to not take into account the fact that this corset comes up a little bit in the back here. So the true underbust measurement of this corset it's about 28 inches if I were to double that 
14. So this corset being standard size actually does fit my natural measurements fairly well. Now if I wanted to measure the length of this corset, then from the center front, if I measure just along the busk, it is 13 inches total from the very top of the binding there to the very bottom of the binding here. If I wanted to uh, measure along the princess seam, not along the side seam which is here, but along the princess seam, you basically go from the lowest point that it curves under the breast and measure to the highest point that it would hit your lap and I would go straight down. I would try to keep this as parallel as possible to the busk here. I do not measure along the curve because this pattern piece is, is actually kind of a funny shape. So I am not measuring along the curve of this second panel here. I'm just going vertical, as vertical as possible. And you can see that this is a tiny bit shorter than 11 inches. It's about 10 and three quarter inches. So I know that this will fit my torso when I try to sit down. It's not going to push up too much on the bottom of my bust and it's not going to dig into my lap. Now, what if you had an overbust corset like this and you wanted to make sure that your bust is going to fit in this because it's actually very, very difficult to buy an overbust corset based on your cup size. Um, it depends on your band and everything. And if somebody tries to measure the, the, the circumference of the bust by just going around the sweetheart, then it's going to be an incredibly inaccurate answer because you're going over a lot of crazy curves and you're not even taking account the fullness in the cup at this area. So this takes a little bit of guesswork, um, but basically I try to determine what is the deepest point in the cup here. And if I sort of eyeball it and feel it, then I would guess it's somewhere in the scope of this area here. And then what I do is I line my measuring tape up with this mark right here. And um, remember that I always try to keep my measuring tape as perpendicular to the busk as possible. Since the busk is vertical, then when I keep my measuring tape perpendicular, that is as close to a true circumference measurement as I, I think I'm going to get. So I just hold my measuring tape and the corset taut at the same time and just walk the tape along to measure the circumference here. And you can see that it is a little bit uh, more than 16. Is it closer to 16 and a half inches? So if I were to double that, it would be 33. So I can say with a fair amount of confidence that this corset would accommodate a, uh, a bust circumference of 33 inches. In the case of versatile corsets, their waist tape can appear to be uh, a bit on a slant, and I find this to be comfortable. It doesn't cause me any problems. Um, if I try to measure along the waist tape here, then it gives me a measurement of a little bit more than 12 inches. Now, if I try to eyeball the horizontal waist measurement, not taking the waist tape into account, and I just sort of um, eyeball it here by putting the tape perpendicular to the busk, then it actually ends up measuring 12 inches again. So it actually doesn't make that much of a difference in this case. And if you want to determine the full length of this overbust corset, uh, then basically you just find the, the peak of the bust here, the peak of this sweetheart, and you put your measuring tape there. Um, fortunately, it's along a seam here, so I just have to walk the measuring tape along this seam. Um, this seam also pretty much drops uh, more or less down in a straight line, so I just have to walk it along here. And you can see that the full length of this corset from the peak of the bust to the bottom is 18 inches. Okay, so I hope this has cleared up a lot of confusion. So when you're shopping for an off-the-rack corset, take your measurements first, read everything you can on the website, look for a size chart or some sort of fitting notes on the website. And if you don't see any fitting information, then email and ask customer service if they have the proportions you're looking to buy. Because you, I mean, you're spending so much on these courses, you really don't wanna go by chance or just eyeball the amount of curve on uh, the, the website, just going by a picture. You really wanna make sure that it fits you right. It will definitely save you a lot of time and money and grief from having to exchange so many corsets in the future. So I hope this helps. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.